Oh. Hello friends, Jenkins Dota here, bringing you another Dota 2 video in which we're going to be talking about the four overpowered tricks that are probably going to get nerfed fairly soon. So anyway, without further ado, let's get right into it. The first trick that I want to show you is something that blew my mind when I witnessed it in a 2 to 3k MMR pub. I was doing a Patreon replay analysis, and then I saw this gentleman soloing Roche on Monkey King with just an Aghanim Scepter, which is really cool because if you go mid Monkey King or carry Monkey King, which is incredibly popular right now, you're always going to get an Aghanim Scepter. So what I think that you should do, I'm going to give myself a smoke here. I think you should smoke for it. The enemy team is going to think you're farming because that's what this Aghanim Scepter is for. You smoke up, you jump onto these trees here so that way they don't see you with wards. Maybe they have some river vision. Hop on into the pit. You can actually boundless strike and then mischief to break your smoke. And then this is going to make it so Roche doesn't hit you. And then you want to just stand as close as possible to Roshan, so that way the monkeys don't act weird and walk away. Sometimes you get unlucky and then they spawn on this side, but essentially you will just slowly solo Roshan. It might take a couple of minutes depending on what moment in the game it's at, but this is still worth it because the enemy team is going to think that you're farming and getting a free Aegis in a game of Dota 2 is incredibly, incredibly valuable. So obviously this is a two minute Roshan, so Roshan is a lot less powerful than if you're doing this at 15 minutes, for example. But the great thing about this is that, of course, Monkey King is a carry. So the stronger Roshan gets, the stronger you get as well. So you can do this very late into the game and it's going to work. The next trick that I'm going to show you is something that is honestly kind of whack. This is probably going to get removed because I think Valve very literally nerfed this before and they don't like behavior like this. This is just some weird, very strange shenanigans. So basically what people used to do with this support Naga that is currently trending, by the way, with this Meteor Hammer into Aghanim Scepter build is that they would Song of the Siren into Meteor Hammer into shift queuing the Song of the Siren ending. And this would hit a pretty good Meteor Hammer combo. This is great for team fights. You just try to hit as many people as possible. And in general, this does work. But if you're playing against a hero like Puck, well, if I try it here and I do the exact same thing, but I spam phase shift, it is very easy to dodge this if you have some sort of instant ability to get out of it because there are actually three server ticks between the end of Song of the Siren and the Meteor Hammer hitting. So conveniently, if you toggle Basilius, back when you could do that, if you toggle Power Treads, which you can still do, or Wards and Sentries, you can actually make the game wait three server ticks and then have the Song of the Siren end, and you will frame perfect the stun at the end of Song of the Siren. So I will show you Meteor Hammer into Shift queuing three Tread Swaps, and I try to dodge it on Puck, I was spamming Phase Shift, it does not work. Now, the problem with this is that this is actually random. I don't know why or how or what the numbers are. It seems like if you literally move the heroes to like different positions or you add new heroes to the game, sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't. And I heard that that's what Valve did to reduce the number of people that are doing this. So what you can do is instead of three power tread swaps, you just do two. And this leaves one server tick between the end of Song of the Siren uh, and the Meteor Hammer hitting. And so one server tick for most people on ping, having to press abilities on the ground, having to spam abilities and just being kind of slow, it's very hard to dodge things. So if I go to the Sember Spirit here and I do the exact same combo with two tread swaps and I try to spam my Sleight of Fist, you can see that it doesn't work. So on 99.9% .9 of heroes, you can just do this with two tread swaps and it works. Uh, but if you're against a Puck, for example, who has phase shift, which can be very easily instantly pressed or shift queued during Song of the Siren, which I would highly recommend if you're getting Song of the Siren, shift queue your actions after so they go on the very first server tick. If that is the case, you might have to roll the dice and see if you get the lucky frame perfect trick. So let's see if I do it again, if I get it. One, two, three, and I will shift Q the phase shift, and I actually did not get it. So, like I said, it's random, but I know if I'm a puck and I get caught in one team fight because somebody risked it all by doing this three tread toggle, 
I'm going to be mad if I get caught by that, because it's instant. You cannot dodge it. The follow-up stun will be there on Puck, and Puck will die. But this is only something you do if you absolutely need to roll the dice to kill a hero like Puck that can otherwise instantly dodge it. Otherwise, do the two treads toggle. That will work most of the time, and it's quite effective. By the way, that last trick is something that I learned from Aoi2000 as he was casting NADPC. This trick that I'm about to show you is brand new technology invented by a friend of mine called Turtle. You may know him if you watch my stream, but he calls this the age trick. I think the name's really beautiful because it's very easy to remember calling it the age trick. Uh, essentially, I will show you exactly why it's called that. This is to set up this astral imprisonment into meteor hammer combo, which people are doing with this very popular OD hero right now. And if I astral this guy, you can see a progress bar. You can see text that says banished. And basically, when that progress bar hits the H, the right end of the H, that is when you Meteor Hammer, and you will essentially hit this almost frame perfect if you do that. So I'll show you here. Okay, it's at about the H, maybe a little bit to the left of the E, and then it's almost frame perfect. And the reason that this matters is because if you're playing against a hero like Ember Spirit, Queen of Pain, Storm Spirit, these heroes who have very close to instant cast abilities to get out of your Meteor Hammer and dodge it, then you want this to be as close to frame perfect as you can get. And the H trick allows you to do that. There's no way a Queen of Pain is going to escape you. So a couple of little intricacies here. If the enemy team has Sanjin Yasha, if I'm playing OD, this is something that I look out for. Uh, then you just immediately Meteor Hammer and you're going to hit it once again, almost frame perfect. So the H trick goes out the window the moment they have a Sanjin Yasha. The next trick that I want to show you is something that is particularly useful with this new Eternal Shroud item. Mostly because this is just the broken new item that everybody's building. People are getting it on Troll Mid. People are getting it on Bristleback, which is a strong hero. Viper, Lashrak, any hero that really cares about magic resistance, but also wants spell, lifesteal, and mana. Pudge as well, but that hero's dog shit. Uh, essentially, what you can do is as you're building this Eternal Shroud, when you get the Hood of Defiance, you want to lock combining on it. Then what you can do is in the fight where you're going to use the Eternal Shroud, you use the Hood of Defiance first and then use that shield up, just like this. Uh, then you can unlock combining of it, which, which refreshes the cooldown for some reason, and then you can use the secondary shield, which is quite nice, having two of these shields. Everybody knows how much of a pain in the ass it is to kill a Bristleback, for example, with an Eternal Shroud, and in the very first fight, you can get a huge swing of net worth by winning that fight, uh, essentially by having two shields instead of one with this disassemble trick. So there are a couple of other uses of this locking combining into assembling during a team fight trick, uh, particularly with an Eon Disc. This is an older one, so people probably already know this one, but this one is still quite useful. If you don't want this thing to just pop arbitrarily, like you're saving it for a black hole or a chronosphere or something, uh, what you can do is lock combining on the recipe. As you can see here, I can beat the shit out of my bristle back here, and this is not going to pop. I unlock combining on this, and then I try to do it again, and it pops. So this will save you from something like a black hole chronosphere, like I said, and uh, this is much better than just having this pop from the enemy lion pressing his stun on you, and then all of a sudden you don't have any on disc for the fight, and you feel very sad. Another thing that you can do with this disassembling, reassembling thing, this one is way harder to pull off, but it's particularly useful for jungling on certain heroes, even though jungling is kind of dead. Uh, you can lock combining on just a ring of regen, hold enough components that you have the tranquil boots, the enemy team is hitting you, they're hitting you, they're hitting you, uh, maybe you're running away and you're standing far away from the creep wave, all of a sudden you unlock combining on this, get a little bit of healing, but you don't want the tranquil boots permanently, so you wait until the disassemble cooldown is about to pop, and then you disassemble it again, unlock combining on the two components, have the ring of regen locked, uh, and then you can do essentially the same thing. And this is a really nice thing that you can do in lane. If you're, let's say, once again, a bristleback who doesn't necessarily want tranquil boots, maybe you want treads into hood, but you're going to use this ring of regen eventually. So you can still get the tranquil boots regen as long as you have a wind lace and you do this disassemble trick. And it can be pretty broken given the game. Hello, it's me again, since uh, it is still the video. I suppose that's obvious, but Gunner keeps asking me why I don't put him in videos. So I thought I would include this clip here at the end of him doing some very cool stuff with Morphling, with an Arcane Rune, 
stealing Dark Willow late game. Uh, we actually killed Arteezy, got a rapier in this game. It was pretty cool, but in any case, that's it for this video. That's all I got. If anybody has any cool tricks that you've discovered in 7.28b, are we on the B patch now? I think we are. Then leave a comment below. I'm interested to hear what you guys have discovered because boy oh boy every week I realize I know almost nothing about this game. But in any case, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in another video.